The DMM servo drives can be easily networked into a CAN bus system to utilize the reliability and versatility of the CAN specification. In this demonstration, we'll review in detail the DYN servo drive proprietary CAN protocol as well as setup with the PC CAN host. The DYN servo drives follow CAN 2.0a specification. The application layer message protocol follows a proprietary DMM format, which we will review later. Up to 64 drives can be networked on the same bus, with drive ID 0 being broadcast. Standard baud rates up to 1 MHz are available, with option for custom baud rates according to application request. When ordering the DYN servo drives with CAN capability, make sure to select the model number with C designation in the part number. Before starting this demo, make sure to review the basics of the CAN specification along with the DYN servo drive CAN communication manual. For the CAN host, we will be using the Peak System PCAN USB to CAN adapter along with their PCAN View software to send and read CAN messages. Wire the system as shown. Connect each CAN nodes, CAN high and CAN low, and ground wires together. Make sure to use twisted pair wires for the CAN high and CAN low signals. 5V power does not need to be connected since both the DYN servo drive and PCAN adapter are self-powered. Connect the termination resistors at node ends. The DYN servo drive uses signal port JP2 for the CAN connection. On JP2 port, pin 1 is ground, pin 2 is CAN high, and pin 3 is CAN low. To simplify the networking between each servo drive, users can utilize a CNJP2RJ45 splitter to split the servo drive CAN connector into two standard RJ45 jacks. The DYN2 and DYN4 servo drive termination resistors can be connected internally by jumpers. Follow the on-screen images for image reference on the location of the jumpers. Connecting the jumper connects the termination resistors. In the servo drive setting, set the command input mode to CAN and set the baud rate as desired. Also set the drive ID according to the node drive ID. The DYN servo drive proprietary protocol follows standard CAN 2.0a specification with an 11-bit identifier. The identifier field contains both the drive ID and message function code. The higher 6 bits are the drive ID and lower 5 bits the function code. This allows a total of up to 64 drives per bus and 32 function codes to communicate or command the drive. The servo drive CAN manual lists all the function codes in their specification. In this demonstration, we'll go over the message details and frame structure of five common functions. For the first communication, we recommend starting with the diagnostic counter function. Every time this command is sent to the drive, the drive returns the counter number in increments by 1. So the first time it reads 0, then 1, then 2, and so on. When the counter reaches 255, it rolls back to 0. This counter can be used to verify stable and consistent communication. We use a drive with ID number 20, which is 14 in hexadecimal. The diagnostic counter has function code 1F in hexadecimal notation, so for the 11-bit identifier, the first 6 bits as the drive ID is 14 and the last 5 bits as function code is 1F. Combining this gives us an identifier of 29F. The data length and data fields are negligible, so we'll leave them as 0. Note that throughout this video, all numbers and data are in hexadecimal notation. The response from the drive is as follows. The drive returns the same identifier with data length always 1. The first time this function is called, it returns 0. The second time, it returns 1, and so on. Set the servo drive ID to 20 in the DMMDRV program to match. In the PCAN viewer, create a message with the appropriate parameters. We will set the message to be repeated every second. We can see that the servo drive returns the counter number as expected. In the second demonstration, we will read from and save into parameter group 2, which has function codes 11 and 14. 
From the CAN manual, we can see that parameter 2 group contains the max speed and max acceleration parameters in the drive. The data length for the save function is 2 bytes, where the first data byte is speed and second data byte is the acceleration. When reading, send a message with 0 data length and 0 data. Using the same drive ID as before, the message identifier for the save function is 291. Data length is 2, and 2 data bytes is speed and acceleration parameters that we want to save into the drive. In this case, we're saving hexadecimal 37 into the speed, and 46 into the acceleration. In decimal format, this is 55 and 70. Once this message is sent, the servo drive immediately saves the parameters and sends no reply. To read parameter group 2, Send a message with identifier 294 with zero data. Servo drive responds with same identifier with data length 2. First byte is max speed parameter and second byte is max acceleration parameter. Here is the message sent and received from PCAN viewer. Note that each command has an allowed data range. For the save max speed and max acceleration command, the setting limit is from 0 to 127. If the host tries to send any parameter or position command outside the allowed data range, the servo drive replies with the data error response as shown. In the third demonstration, we will send the point-to-point -point move absolute command to the servo drive. Refer to the function code specification in the manual for details of this command. The point-to-point -point move commands follow an S-curve motion profile according to the command position, gear number, max speed, and max acceleration parameters as shown. Use this calculation to set the motion according to requirement. We want to send the position command of 120,000 points. Looking at the data length table in the CAN manual, we can see this command will require the data length to be 3. Convert the 120,000 command into 3 bytes and send to drive. Here's a screenshot of the PCAN viewer message. The servo drive sends no reply and simply runs the motion when the command is received. We can also create a second message with command position of 0 to move the drive back to 0 position. To read the encoder position, we use function code 0E. In the specification, we can see the encoder position can be read by sending a data byte of 1B with function code 0E to read the encoder position. So we send the identifier as 28E, data length as 1, and data as 1B to read the encoder. The servo drive responds with the data length and data according to the current encoder position of the motor. We can set a fast 10 millisecond message cycle time to see the motor position changing. The DMM high resolution absolute encoder detects even the slightest change in position. In the last demonstration, we will send the synchronized point-to-point -point relative move command. From the function specification, we can see that the go relative position sync command loads the relative move command into the drive, but the drive does not start motion until the sync trigger command is received. This command is useful when synchronizing multiple axes to start motion at the exact same time. The user can preload all the command points into each drive then send a sync trigger message with broadcast ID of 0 and all the drives on the network will start motion exactly at the same time. In our demonstration, we'll use two drives with ID of 20 and 21 in decimal notation. We'll send this first drive a command of negative 9.5 million points and the second drive will be sent a command of positive 9.5 million points. Note that positive command rotates the motor clockwise and negative command rotates the motor counterclockwise. First, we send two messages to load the command into the two drives. 
Then we set the sync trigger message with one second cycle time to see that the two drive starts motion at the sync trigger message reception. We start by running the diagnostic counter at one second intervals just to make sure the communication is stable. And we can also start the encoder read at 250 millisecond cycle. We can see the motor encoder being read every 250 milliseconds. So we use these two messages to increase the speed and acceleration on the first drive and on the second drive here. And then we use these two messages to load the synchronized absolute move. You can see the messages has been sent through the counts. And we start the motion with this command. So we can see for the first drive, it's reached its command position in synchronized format with the second drive. This concludes our CAN bus demonstration video. For viewer references, here's a list of all the messages we use in this demonstration. For more information, visit our website or contact us directly.